your perspective towards failure is basically just uh, something which is a part of a part of your journey and uh, it's it, it it's just an opportunity right to uh, kind of excel and grow so i think that's your perspective towards failure my perspective towards failure is it's a word and it can be weaved the way you want it the way i weave it is depending on the way my mind runs okay the way you weave it is depending on the way your mind runs it's a word and the definition you've given to the word making yourself realize or feel that it's a negative term is the one perspective that should not exist because you don't need to look at failure as something negative you need to look at it as something that is allowing you to reach a point of success because if you go to read some of the best autobiographies biographies stories that you know you know people around you probably your family friends parents you will always realize that the pride a person takes when they're talking about their success stories is in the struggles they had to get to the success that's where the pride lies what are you proud of you're not proud of telling people that oh you know what this was a cake walk for me i loved becoming successful and i made so many crores or i earned so many awards or i did this or that that's not how it works you want to tell people look hey i have struggled and i've climbed mountains and i've crossed rivers and i've crossed oceans to reach this place so what's that you're actually highlighting the failures and the struggles of your journey that have reached success if you talk to somebody who is successful in whatever walk of life right. if you talk about uh, professionally personally however you like it but if you talk to a successful person their pride lies in the struggles that they have um experienced their pride lies in how many times they've fallen because that's what they want to share with you and that's what makes the entire success story so much more interesting right so how can one this the whole concept of uh, failure and struggle and defeat because that is your entire journey to be honest uh, what else is it i mean i've never met a person who's very happy to tell me that you know what this is my dad's money i've inherited it and that's the way i'm running business no even those guys will usually be zarina i've inherited my dad's money i've inherited my dad's business but you know what i've been working really hard to get where i am today so that is the perception that is that is the way i look at it it's a word it depends on how you want to look at it right and like you said uh, if we were more vocal about our failures there would be so much learning you know that people could there were there would be so many lessons that people could learn but the fact that we don't share it 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 yes. kind, of builds kind of a wall you know uh between people because they are not uh, being uh, completely honest with each other and completely vocal about what they have gone through right so, right so this is something you know if you go back right now we've got all the results coming out and uh, everybody has got good results which is great you know the state is doing well the country is doing well results wise but you know usually you may have had this experience in school or uh, college where a relative or friend the parents would decide what's the percentage you want to tell people outside if you haven't got a first class percent if you've got a 53 or a 50 and uh, you know people are going to ask because you've given your 10th grade or you've given your 12th grade and they're going to ty they're going to ask you so parents will sit with children at home and discuss and decide that uh, let's not give them this let's tell them you've got so much hmm. that's the first step of camouflaging failure because you have felt your child is a failure you've told him or her to not accept it to lie about it to camouflage it instead say that this is what you worked hard for this is what you've got and if the ones who who share their experiences or percentages what do you get to you the the grading system was not correct or my friend didn't study that hard and they got lucky so in my opinion success is a matter of luck if you ask any failure and a failure is only a failure if they believe in luck and not the work that they put in True. very true 
So, so that is something I'd heard from a, an anonymous author once when I was in an Australian bookstore somewhere in Sydney. The success is a matter of luck, ask any failure. But then again, when you change your perception of a failure, you realize that, hey, yes, because those are the parents who will tell people that, you know, this uh, other fellow's son, they got really lucky because their grading was much better. My son's grading was not good. My daughter's grading was not good. Why the excuses? Why the excuses? No need for it. And I think till the point we're going to cover our failures and not get to it, right? Not go to the root mm -hmm. cause of it. So I look at failures and whenever I fail, I, I don't like to blame external situations or people. Because I have done that in the past and it's not worked for me. Because it's not like I, I like to be honest that, you know, what I have done, I have done. But now a new perspective is is there and I think maybe this is going to uh, it's just going to take longer to accept that fear. Yes, so yes. I think the moment we take responsibility uh, of our actions, that's the time when accepting failure becomes really, uh, becomes very easy for you as well, mentally, emotionally, all levels. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. I mean, I wouldn't agree more uh, and I completely endorse what you're saying because how else are we going to learn? But, you know, Neha, on a macro scale, what I do feel is people have to work together on this word. You know, you and me alone have our perception. And if I am a, a non-conformist, I will make sure that the society doesn't bother me. And they can bother my parents, they can bother anybody, it doesn't bother me. So I know that I have conditioned my mind. But what about all those little children there, you know, teenagers, younger generation, millennials, who are anyway having trouble deciding what their future looks like. And you try and conform them, put people in a box. I just feel as a community, as a society, as, as a, a collective, we have to work on this together. Change the way we use the word, change the way we express it, and the acceptance and acknowledgement of it. Maybe that will make a, a good amount of a ripple effect in the future. 